my videos thus far have been kind of serious. Um, but in doing them, I've kind of had to think back on a lot of my experiences growing up, and I've realized that some of the things we did and believed in were just freaking hilarious. So one of the funniest things that I remember was the furor around dating and relationships. Now, as you probably know, Jehovah's Witness couples require chaperones, no matter how old you are, how many times you've been around the block. Um, if you've been married before and you feel like you can control yourself while out in public, that's just too bad, buddy. Um, you go to the movies with someone of the opposite sex, be prepared to have a third party sitting between you or behind you. And they're going to report anything they think they see or they daydream about or imagine or make up or whatever um, to your parents if you're young enough and sometimes even when you're older and to the elders or to the congregation at large, depending on who it is. Anyway, anyway in thinking back, Jehovah's Witnesses don't actually allow adolescents to be adolescent. Relationships that ought to be learning experiences are treated like deadly serious life commitments. So many people butt into your relationships that dating teenagers in the congregation can actually date and get married without knowing each other at all. So what you end up with is this group of miserable people who've never been allowed to explore their own likes, their own dislikes, um, who married very young and chose from a very small candidate pool um, just so that they could experience sex before Armageddon and who are so sexually repressed that they can't think about anything else. So of course the congregation is riddled with adultery and general weirdness. Seriously, these people are obsessed with sex. I honestly think that we could have murdered someone in cold blood and the witnesses, at least the ones that I knew, wouldn't think it was as bad as having had totally consensual sex outside marriage. But that also means that us ex-Jehovah's Witnesses tend to be a little freakier than others you might meet. Um, after everything that we were taught and imagined worldly people were doing, I've found that most people are surprisingly vanilla. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Anyway, I can remember when my sister was about 14, my mother actually let her go out with a 21-year-old pioneer brother. Um, she trusted him because he was male and a pioneer and therefore holy, um, that there would be a chaperone present, etc. She trusted and did not verify. Not smart. Um... And come to find out, he gave my sister alcohol and drugs and, of course, fornication, because duh. Um, when I was about 15 or 16, um, I fell in love with a boy from another neighboring congregation. And looking back, it was just your everyday run-of-the-mill adolescent relationship, or it should have been. Um, all we were really allowed to do was write each other letters and talk on the phone. Occasionally, we got to see each other at gatherings, which is JW for cookouts or parties. Um, but we got this bright idea that we would both take the same class at the swim center so we could see each other. And yes, we actually did go to the class. <laughs> um, I cannot tell you how many times I got cornered in the bathroom, at the meetings, and counseled by busybody sisters and people who wanted to grill me for information, or I got pulled in the back room by the elders because somebody had imagined what we might be doing. So one evening after our swim class, we actually got permission from both of our parents um, for him to drive me home. Now keep in mind, I lived three miles away. Okay, this is not a long drive. Well, we made the mistake of stopping at a gas station and to be fair, he did give me a kiss in the car, but holy shit, it was crazy. People in the congregation were saying that we should get married immediately, and you would have thought that we had gone on some kind of crime spree because we rode home together three miles and stopped at the gas station. Well, then he got in trouble with his parents for something. I don't know what. Um, and their bright idea of a suitable punishment was to forbid him to see or talk to me for like two months. 
Because turning teenagers into Romeo and Juliet always works. <laughs> Idiots. And you know, know from my past videos about my mother that she was all over this relationship. I mean, so far up in it. I did not like being used as a punishment. And I was getting really tired of all the pressure. So a few weeks after he got ungrounded, um, I decided I just was going to break off the relationship. Um, well, before I could do it, my mom calls this meeting at his house with his whole family where she proceeds to break up with him for me. Um, I have never, and still to this day, have never been so mortified in my life. His dad was mad because I didn't cry. I was too horrified to cry. Um, his younger sister was creeping on the stairs, listening to the whole thing and like snickering. Um, the boyfriend was sobbing on the couch between his parents. His mom was giving me this horrible stink eye and really rightfully so if she thought that I did this on purpose or had any control over it whatsoever, which I didn't. And my mother was loving it was awful. <laughs> so um, later that same year, there was more drama because there was a brother in our congregation who was, he was at least 30 and single. Um, and everybody whispered that he liked younger sisters. Um, I think he liked men. But anyway, that's another story. Um, well, he was friends with my mom's one and only boyfriend post dad. And um, our house was also close to the Kingdom Hall. So after the Thursday night meeting one night, they decided, you know, they would come to our house for coffee. Well, this brother asked if I wanted to ride in his car since it was only a three minute drive. And my mom clearly wanted to spend that three minutes in illicit conversation with her boyfriend, not chaperoned. So I said, well, sure. Oh, well, um, keep in mind, I was 15, 16 years old. Unbeknownst to us, someone stopped my mom and her boyfriend for a five minute conversation after we left the hall. So we arrived at the house before they did. Not thinking about anything because I was a child and the situation was completely innocent. We went inside and started trying to make the coffee. Well, I didn't know how to use the coffee maker and he couldn't figure it out either. So he was reading the manual out of the junk drawer and I was pushing random buttons when my mom and her boyfriend came in. And her boyfriend immediately like puffs up and calls his friend outside to talk. And my mom starts just berating me. We almost ended up in a judicial committee over five minutes with a coffee maker. I am not kidding. <laughs> but, you know, lots of the witnesses actually have their minds in the gutter. They seem to see or imagine illicit sex everywhere, except their blind spot, which seemed to be, in my experience, pioneers. Um, as long as you were a pioneer, you were kind of above suspicion. So when I was in high school, my mother had these pioneer sisters from another state come and stay in our house. I mean, it was ridiculous, and I was already pretty much on my way out by then. Um, I actually took a drama class as an elective in school, um, and I had a few friends in that class. I had started making some worldly friends and having some cognitive dissonance by this time. Um, well, my mom wanted some furniture moved, and so she asked me to ask some of my friends from school to help me move it. Okay. Don't know why she couldn't ask some of the witness friends, but anyway... So clearly having worldly friends is okay as long as they're acting in a servile capacity or something. <laughs> anyway, once again, my two friends who happened to be male arrived at the house before my mom did and we started taking this bed that she wanted moved apart to move it. We were literally there for maybe five to seven minutes before she came in. Long enough to move the mattress out and start taking the rails off the bed, right? So my mom walks in and zeroes in on something on the floor. I'm like, what, what is a piece of trash, whatever. It was a condom wrapper. Okay. None of us had noticed it because apparently it fell off the mattress. Now keep in mind that the pioneer, one of the pioneer sisters had been staying at our house and slept in my mom's room um, only a few weeks prior to this while we were out of town. Okay. This is very important. But my mom's immediate conclusion was that I must have done it with both of those boys with one condom in seven minutes flat. She was like sniffing the wrapper and waving it in my face and screaming, what is this? She shouted at my friends and they were very confused and, and we were all completely mortified. I wanted to die on the spot. The more we denied it, the more rabid she got. And, and the best part is that none of us were attracted to each other at all. 
Well, I mean, the two of them may have been to each other. I, I don't really know. Um, but like that never came up with us, like ever. We, it was not a thing. So after they left, I told her, look, I think it belongs to this pioneer sister. It has to. That's the only, the only explanation. And then I got slapped in the face for my attitude. But a few weeks later, um, that pioneer sister got hastily married, but not disfellowshipped. And nobody apologized to me or my friends, but it became pretty clear that I was right and it, it was hers. So anyway, when I was uh, about 17, I liked to work in food service at the assemblies because it gave me something to do besides listen to the mind-numbing program. And I had pretty rampant and undiagnosed ADD. But the problem with working in food service at the assembly is that it makes you look more spiritual than you actually are, or in my case, more than I wanted to be. Um... And there were a lot of inappropriately old brothers who hit on me. I mean, dudes that were my dad's age, dudes that had kids a few years younger than me. I mean, I remember one who was really kind of, he was short and very portly, and he had one of those mustaches that looked like some animal was nesting on his face. And he kept talking about how much money he made, and I could not figure out why he's telling me this. I was 17. Until he gave me his phone number at the end of the assembly and said pretty baldly that he was looking for a wife. Uh, yeah, no thanks. Um, then there was a pioneer brother who joined us on a summer serve where the need is great trip, which was actually a get Bridget away from her worldly friends <laughs> trip um, orchestrated by my mom. Who else? Um, but this guy, he told me he was actually pretty nice. Um, and I might have liked him under other circumstances, but... He told me that he would like to take me out on a date, but only if I would agree to marry him up front because he didn't want to waste a lot of money if I wasn't a sure thing. All right, Casanova. No, thank you. Then there was this guy that, um, that my dad and my grandmother really wanted me to marry, and he was about seven or eight years older than me, and he was really, really quiet, and he was really, really spiritual. He was perhaps the most asexual being that I have ever come across in my entire life. <laughs> I mean, he came from a lovely family, and um, he was probably a wonderful husband to whatever submissive Jehovah's Witness lady that he married. I'm sure they are blissfully happy, but I was just not even remotely interested. The thing is, there aren't very many options for potential boyfriends in the, in the witnesses because there are a lot more women than there are men. And the men are basically in control of everything. So it gets really weird. And as weird as it can be when somebody's creeping on you because they're interested, um, it can be way creepier when some Jehovah's Witness is trying to set you up with someone. Oh, wow. Those brothers, though. Smooth operators, I'll tell you. <laughs> Y'all, seriously, other people's relationships and sex lives or lack thereof, whatever, are none of your business. I mean, I'm telling you right now, if you're dating someone and a third party is all up in your business, there is a big freaking problem. Especially if they're prying and spying and trying to mete out punishment for things that they don't even have business knowing. But, you know, that's not limited to the witnesses because a few years after I got out, I joined a church and I got really involved in that's another story too. Wow. But I left because there was this lady on the prayer team um, who started randomly grilling me one day on who I was dating and whether we had slept together or not. And I had this moment of sheer flashback terror that only a witness sister can know. <laughs> but then I shook it off and I told her that was, you know, none of her business. And if I wanted her opinion or advice on my private life, I probably would have asked for it. And I walked out and never went back. Um, so that's my religious dating experience. Um, I'm doing pretty great.